Hey everybody, it's Quick Step. It's so gray and dreary outside. I'm gonna have to color correct the crap out of this. Anyways, today we're going to talk about, uh, well, you know, typical step back stuff where everything's gonna be depressing, but hopefully we can find some way to turn things around. So the new story this week is that the Supreme Court has decided not to block Donald Trump's initiative to put a ban on trans people being in the military. Already there are interesting discussions going on about how this is a complex thing to think about. Uh, trans people being banned from the overtly imperialist United States military uh, is going to bring up some complicated feelings. But I'm going to talk about how this is a very bad uh, set of circumstances for trans people and their civil rights. And imperialism discussions aside, we should be opposing this to help our trans brothers, sisters, and non-binary siblings. Is there a non-gender specific word for brother and sister aside from sibling? Uh, if there is, please comment it. So let's start by not mincing words. The US military is bad. There's probably no military force in all of human history that has been as powerful as the current US military. The US, uh, even before a huge increase in their defense budget, was still outspending the next 20 countries in the world combined. And the US military has uh, some of the most deadly weapons, literally apocalyptic level if you think of nuclear warheads, uh, the most destructive weapons that have ever been conceived by human minds. But in a country like the United States, the military uh, holds a few benefits for people who join it that sometimes people who maybe not aren't interested in uh, becoming an imperialist uh, person, not to mention the fact that Americans are very heavily propagandized in a pro-military uh, viewpoint, but there are some benefits, especially in the realm of education and healthcare. Whether or not committing murder in order to get education and healthcare, uh, that's up to you. And of course, the United States is not exactly great at treating its veterans after they're done killing for the state. So that's, uh, that's a whole discussion in and of itself. So yeah, just go to either GoFundMe or to the Twitter hashtag TransCrowdFund and you'll find that healthcare costs are by far the number one thing that trans people are in desperate need of, especially in the United States. So the United States, for some perplexing reason, after World War II decided to not put in a public healthcare service like other countries did. Uh, so a lot of trans people are really breaking the piggy bank when it comes to trying to get the necessary treatments and medications that they need to uh, basically save their own lives. Not to mention that the military is a massive employer in the United States and trans people in America experience unemployment at about 50% higher than the average. So, you know, decreasing job opportunities for trans people and a job that gets them access to healthcare is going to negatively impact their lives, no matter what you feel about the military as uh, as its organization, as its goals. And so because of this development and this uh, step back, no pun intended, of civil rights in America, we need to talk about a couple things. One, this is a uh, setback for civil rights, and it shows that the whole progress myth that we talk about, how things are always getting better, uh, is not necessarily always true. And two, when it comes to making the world a better place to live in, the state might not be our first organization that we can rely on. So first of all, let's just look at it from the overall perspective. This is a bad sign for trans people in the United States. It's never really been great for trans people in the United States, but letting trans people openly serve in the military was for a little while a sign that at least in some ways, civil rights were on the uptick for trans people. The reasons for the ban that Donald Trump proposes are completely discredited and have absolutely no basis. All reports have shown that trans people in the military have not caused any undue burden on the military infrastructure, which means that this is by all intents and purposes symbolic. This is the government openly saying that they do not care about trans people. They do not consider trans people uh, full citizens and worthy of participation in the public at all. 
And so this is an example of a rollback of civil rights, which is something that we're always taught is not a thing that happens. You know, the civil rights movement happened in the 50s and 60s, and then uh, we solved racism and now it's over. Uh, nothing can ever step back on that at all. But I think that that mentality has shown to be completely hollow, especially in the post-2016 moment where uh, reactionary forces are really clawing back any minuscule social progress made under liberal governments around the world. In this case, it's flat out erasure. And so, yeah, uh, just thinking that you can vote for the right person and somehow save all these civil rights and think that you can, as soon as the law is passed, wipe your hands and say, hey, we did it, we solved the problem, uh, you're misinformed. The fight for social justice and civil rights is going to be an ongoing, non-stop struggle. Not only to get the rights that you are entitled to, but in order to hang on to the rights you have from uh, reactionary backlash from, well, guys who look like me, basically. This is true for trans people and all other LGBTQ plus people. On top of that, this is gonna be true for women. This is true for people of color. This is going to be a fact that's a discussion for a different time. But I don't wanna leave you guys super depressed and to know that uh, eternal vigilance doesn't necessarily need to be something that is depressing and grim. I don't know if you guys were following, but last weekend, H Bomber Guy did an amazing uh, 53 hour stream, I wanna say, to raise money for Mermaids, which is an organization that helps trans youth in the UK raised over $300,000 and what started off as a small $5,000 uh, project uh, quickly ballooned into this massive thing. Like there was the who's who of, of internet celebrity dumb on uh, the stream throughout the weekend. And it was just a real um, amazing thing to watch. I. Uh, my heart grew three sizes that day, and I think that a lot of other people were really, really happy to see an organization that really needed it getting a lot of money. I And I think that this is, in many ways, the model going forward. Social justice is not just a fight for one victory and then walk away. It is a constant uh, activist movement. Sometimes it's going to be brutal, and the forces of the state are going to try and violently repress you, but sometimes you can just play a lot of Donkey Kong and make a tangible benefit in people's lives. And, uh, you know, sometimes a revolution is fun. The H Bomber Guy stream makes me a lot more optimistic for 2019. It makes me think that maybe some things are changing deep within our culture. And I want to see more of it. Uh, I'm really happy to have seen all this stuff going down. And I very much am looking forward to whatever comes out of the next few months from this little community. And also H Bomber Guy uh, is an amazing individual who I could not wish this success on anybody else. Um, truly like amazing soul. But I don't wanna like take away from the gravity of the situation. There are people with interests of rolling back people's civil and human rights that are more powerful than they've been in a long time. And if we don't stick together and help each other out, they're gonna win. There's no easy way to, to take that back. Um, we need to help each other out. Uh, we need to be intersectional and multicultural and um, embrace people who are trying to make the world better in a different way. So yeah. Let's be a team. Anyways, that's all for me today. My big step back video documentary that I've been working on um, has had a little bit of a delay for a couple weeks, but luckily I have another step back video that I am about 90% finished that I've been sitting on. So I'm going to spruce that up and remake it and uh, that should be out for you. So you'll have something smaller uh, for January, but then in February, I hope to get two uh, nice meaty documentaries out that I've been working on for a long time. So uh, look forward to that. Anyways, peace. <laughs>